Tonight is September the 26th, 2021. This is a, a project I've been thinking about for quite some time, and I posted a video not too long ago about the uh, harmonic profile of some violin tones. Didn't seem to have much of an audience for that. <clears throat> but I think you're going to like this. What this has actually been leading up to is I want to um, know, first of all, document and the performance of an SCT amplifier. That's what this is really all about, the SCT. Uh, here's an SCT amp I built not too awful long ago. I made a video of it. I even sprung for the high-end um, Genelex 300Bs. Sounds beautiful. It's a uh, it's a choke loaded plate right here, and then <clears throat> it feeds into these James transformers, which is which are there just to take the high impedance of the tube and give me eight ohms for a speaker. Power transformer, single six SN7 driving each one. Pretty simple design. You can find it all over the internet. Uh, you don't find the choke loaded ones. All that often, but uh, it seems to work quite well. And I'll make a I'll make a statement about these choke values. There is a mentality in audio, it seems, that bigger is always better. Well, <clears throat> and people uh, are always thinking about what's the lowest frequency I want it to pass and be perfect at. We usually choose 20 hertz. We know that's an arbitrary number. Some people say, well, that's just that just comes from the marketing industry. And that may be true, but 20 to 20 kilohertz uh, pretty much is a universal benchmark for high-quality stuff. Okay. Now, one of the issues I've heard about SCT amplifiers is they tend to have, some of them at least, have uh, attenu attenuated high frequencies. It may be a little dull up there. Well, this one does not. This one sounds really good. I love the sound of this thing, even though I know it is much more distorted, technically, than any of my other amplifiers. They, they do have a charm to them that's uh, pretty amazing, and I'm going to try to document that. That's, that's probably the ultimate goal of this video, if I can get there. I've got some, some decent software here. Let me just start out and just start showing you some things. I hope this is coherent enough. This is just a 1 kilohertz tone from the uh, Tektronix SG-505. You see there, there are no harmonics out there. That's what we would expect, right? It does 0.0008%. That's eight parts per million. Okay, that's one thing. And then, here's another one of that very same tone played through the SET. Well, here's the second harmonic, the third harmonic, and this is at one watt. The 300B SCT left channel, one watt at eight ohms. One kilohertz. So. Even at one watt, we've already added this guy in. And I don't have any adjustments to tweak it out. So, you know, it's it's what it is. And I think it's quite good. Sounds sounds really good. Okay, now what I'm doing now is I'm measuring another one. I, I can't, it would, I would be here all night. It'd be a terribly long video if I tried to uh, show you absolutely every measurement I make, but I'll show you what I'm doing. And what I'm doing now is I'm gonna get a printout of, uh, this amplifier right here, this is a uh, this is built a part correct from a uh, Macintosh MA230, except I don't use 7591s, I use the L34s. It's rated at 30 watts, it'll do about 45. It's, it's, it's a laboratory standard great amplifier. I've had this thing built in 1977, so I've had it 45, 44 years. Okay, with that said, Let's see what we can get out of it. And I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. I'll just show you one measurement because we'll have to talk about most of it on pieces of paper. But let's look up here at the uh, spectrum analyzer and get in as close as we can. Okay, that'll work. Now I'm going to plug the one kilohertz into, I hope you guys can hear that it doesn't drive you crazy. Oh my god, that's 58 watts. How did I do that? Uh oh, wrong oscillator. Sorry. <laughs> okay, that's a little better. That's a little better. Uh, let me see, I've got it up. I've got it up pretty high right now. There's one watt. Okay, we're down to the one watt level again. We gotta do everything the same. 
Let me show you where I'm getting all that. You gotta move the camera around here a little bit. See, there's our our uh, one kilohertz. Right there is our one watt, 1.01. .01. And just as uh, a oscilloscope display of it, of course, it looks really good as we would expect. And if you want to always, and I do this on purpose, if you want to check that uh, the one watt is correct, it's into eight ohms, you take that number right there. Is that going to, excuse me, is that going to focus? Come on now. Yeah. You could take 2.848 squared divided by eight and you'll get one. So anyway, it's always good if you got the, you got the toys to uh, have double checks on what you're doing. Now let's go back to this. Okay, one watt. I had that thing. I plugged into the wrong oscillator a while ago. Went and sent it off the screen. 58 watts. Well, there it is, at one watt. There, it, it's not adding anything. Now let me show you something though that you might be interested in. And uh, I made a comment or some, on a video not too long back about. Um, it was actually started by Doug here in El Paso, Uncle Doug, as you guys know him. And uh, it was about uh, the imbalance in the um, cathode currents causing uh, second harmonic uh, content to increase, and it does. But and there, and and that video went on, and there were some comments, and it was pointed out, as I pointed out in there, and another gentleman confirmed it that you actually don't get totally the best performance with totally balanced tubes. Now this is splitting hairs, but it is true because of the differences in the output transformer for one thing. If you've got a standard output transformer with 5,000 turns, which is uh, one half of the uh, transformer, and then you got on top of that another 5,000 turns, they have to be the same number of turns because we've got to cut the, uh, the magnetic field in there the same number of times. But the length of wire is different. The outer bobbin part, portion of it is going to be more wire because it's on a larger diameter. And it'll measure slightly different in DC resistance too. So there are you know imperfections in even the transformer. I think Macintosh a long time ago with their the way they wind their wires um, parallel with one another unity coupling I believe they call it I think mostly eliminated that. But that doesn't mean that these regular little transformers like the Acrosound and Peerless and UTC you know what I mean that they're not good they're darn good they really are. Okay, but here's what I'm going to show you is we're going to look, actually we're going to be really critical looking right in there where the second harmonic would appear. One kilohertz would be right there, two kilohertz. I'm going to just unbalance it a little bit. Whoops, no, we, we got to run it up a little bit higher than that, sorry. That's okay. There we go. Okay, you see, let me see if we, yeah, we increased a second. See, as I unbalance it even more, I get a, I increase my second harmonic right there. My third went away. So as I start turning it back the other way, this is shifting the balance between the two. But actually, I can, looks like I can completely get rid of the second <laughs> with the addition of the third. This is running it at high power. This is not running it at one watt. This is a, a, a little bit of a digression, digression from the other, from the real subject. But anyway, I had to show you this. And there's the second back. So I think we would put it uh, where <laughs> would we put it? Would we do that? Would we eliminate the second altogether and live with the third? I mean, it's down. Uh, that's at zero. That's down um, 65 dB. That's 10 to the 6.5 power ratio. Or do we want to? Or do we? You know, we, what do we want? We can have it our way, except we can't get rid of both of them perfectly at the same time. I think I would eliminate the second. Okay, now we turn it back down to one watt, because that's where we're doing everything. Okay, now we're back at our one watt level, and you see there's nothing there. We had to do it at the one watt level to be able to, uh, you know, have a one-to-one -one comparison with the 300B. So a good vacuum tube amplifier at a watt doesn't add any anomalies into it. The, the harmonic distortion is uh, insignificant. 
Now, um, where I want to actually go with this <clears throat> is I was uh, told the other day, a comment was made that um, that the anomalies in the um, harmonic profile for the 300B will manifest themselves mostly in the higher frequency harmonics is what I was told if I understood what I was told correctly and I kind of bought into that I said you know I bet that's right so what we're going to do here now that uh, we've examined this well I will have to show you the, um, the some harmonic profiles of, um, of like a violin tone let me just show you those pictures before we get off on, on the other subject let's zoom out here Okay, you've seen the one watt and uh, that one. Okay, here's an interesting one. A wonderful young lady here in El Paso uh, made these uh, violin tones for me. This is the uh, E note. This is on violin too. We did it on two, two of them. And this is what it looks like coming straight out of the... Um, of the recorder, quite a nice little recorder. I don't know why I picked that. I, I, I didn't mean to pick that uh, one kilohertz tone. God, it's, it's so difficult to get everything exactly right. Actually, we're looking at um, what note are we looking at? E, and the frequency of E is uh, 659 hertz. Yeah, darn it. This thing right here should be over here. That's where it should be. It should be right there showing us that. Anyway, making mistakes already. This is what it looks like coming straight out of the uh, recorder. And um, coming out of the... Uh, no, that's wrong. Well, I'm going to have to get my pages straight first. Okay, what needs to be uh, seen here, this right here, uh, which was nothing but the note and the violin, and it was played out of, uh, this is the tone straight out of the uh, recorder. This is actually kind of hard to see unless you can just left, right, left, right, left, right the uh, things. Here it is. I don't know if I can put these two side by side so you can see them both. Probably not. It's going to be difficult. Uh, <clears throat> You can grind them down. Yeah, I think I find something way out there around the ninth or the tenth harmonic that's ever, ever so slightly different. But for all practical purposes, they're the same. I think the slight difference I see in one or two of the harmonics way out here, it's not that big a deal. I think it's probably within the era of the measurement. So one watt, it does a darn good job. Uh, we saw from the one kilohertz what it actually did add. It added a second and a third. But when it comes to the music, I do not see a significant amount of increase on anything. I mean, if we look at the peaks, here's our fundamental. We gotta look at kind of a ratio. It looks the same there to me. Look at this, and there's that one. They are so much the same. That is splitting hair. You, you, you got to kind of throw your imagination in there a little bit. Let's run it up at a little bit higher power and uh, see how it performs. Okay. I had to have my pages in the right order. I couldn't talk about it. Uh, what I've done now is I've raised it to 5.7 watts. So let me just show you what I've done here. And I'm testing it again. And then I'll show you the. Uh, Sure you can hear it there. And let's do it once more. I'm doing it with these violin notes because they're a real note instead of just. Instead of just some one kilohertz, you know, a clinical study here. Okay, look here. It does seem to. This is this is the, the perfect. Let's zoom back out here. This is the uh, right out of the recorder. This is our standard. And I've looked at all these harmonics up here. And what it does do 
We're not driving the, the amplifier to its maximum power. I just ran it up to 5.7 watts. It does a really good 7, 7, sometimes 8 watts. No, it's quite a nice little amplifier. But anyway, this is this is our model, and this is what we get. All of those come up there pretty much. You need to see both these at the same time as you can. There you go. Maybe I can get these side by side. There you go. Stare at that for a second. Well, <laughs> that one behind it makes that one hard to see, doesn't it? Doggone it. Just can't have it all. If, uh, if you weren't able to see through the, through the back of it, I think it'd be better. Let's do it like that. Maybe that'll help. Yeah. So our amplifier does this to it. It does seem to... Uh, have its effect out there. That's actually starting out at the sixth harmonics. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and then fourteen on both of them. It's way down here. I wonder it just has a, a dislike for the fourteenth harmonic for some reason. But it changed this, which is as close to what the violin should sound like. It made it sound like this. And this is what it sounds like. It sounds like this, or it sounds like this. You know, with that AB box that I built, if I could do one, the other, one, the other, one, the other, I wonder if we'd hear it. I think some ears would. I have friends here in town that are musicians. I think they'd hear it. And I think some of you guys would hear it, too. Even over the Internet and um, YouTube and everything else. So anyway, that is the project. I guess I've uh, kind of satisfied it. I was going to do it for all of the tones, and oh my, I, you know, I just, I was going to be here for hours doing this, but I, I think it made the point. And um, I'll tell you one other thing. I've been doing some, uh, some interesting work on, um, I want to know what the resonant frequency of our chokes are. I want to know what the resonant frequency of, for example, this choke. Well, it's not that hard to figure out. You use a, a very sensitive uh, little uh, detector and you measure its resonant frequency. Uh, you put a resistor in series with it and you put a tone through it and you measure the voltage across the resistor. I found that it didn't work very well loading it across the inductor. And you know, uh, <clears throat> when it's resonant, it would be parallel resonant because the capacitance of the uh, choke or the transformer would be parallel with the inductance and that uh, resonance that presents a high impedance. So if you put a voltmeter across that, you, you would expect to get a peak. But I couldn't get a very good peak across that, but as I put a 470K resistor in series with it and measured across the, um, the resistor for a dip, because as the um, impedance rises on the, on the uh, resonance circuit, there's going to be more voltage drop across it and less voltage drop across the resistor. It works perfectly. It's absolutely beautiful, but here's the point of it all. So that you don't have to unless you just, you know, can't control yourself and you have to go out and measure something. If <laughs> uh, <clears throat> the shunt capacitance is darn close to the capacitance of the winding, either side of the winding, to the case. For all practical purposes, it's the same. I don't remember the numbers that came out, but they were something like, oh, I don't know, 168 picofarads, maybe a perfect resonance, and, uh, you know, 140 picofarads to, to the case. So you see, <clears throat> if you need to know basically the shunt capacitance of your, uh, of your choke, you can just measure it to the case, and it'll give you a pretty good number. Okay, well that's it. I guess I don't really have much more to prove on the SET. Is this one uh, significantly different from one that uses a gapped uh, output transformer? I don't know. I'm not going to build one just to find out. Uh, this stuff is just getting too hard to do. I am going to have a friend come down here if everything goes right from Denver and he and I are going to build a push-pull 810 amplifier. He's going to have to do all the heavy lifting <clears throat> and take it back for, uh, for his band. 
you can get as much as uh, 725 watts out of a pair of push-pull 810s, so we'll see what we can get. We'll make a video of that. So hopefully I'll have something to post on that in about a month. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. Stay safe. God bless, and uh, we'll carry on.